Well, this is to my brothers and sisters who are caught in um, terrible circumstances. You've gone from the fire into the frying pan, and the frying pan is pretty uncomfortable because it could lead you right back to the fire. You were in countries that have isms, Islamism and communism, and, uh, and you've, you've had to take yourself and your families <coughs> excuse me, to countries that aren't exactly welcoming to you. You're, you're illegal immigrants. Uh, you're refugees. And you can't work. And, and uh, some of the work that you get is barely enough. And you have needs. I know because you talk to me about them. You send me the texts wishing me good morning and good evening and praying for me and asking how I'm doing and, and, uh, and I get the messages that you need a job that you, need a, you need revenue you're, you're not begging for money you're looking for opportunity praise God for that God will provide you with an opportunity let me read this this is from Joel chapter 2 so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army, which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions also on my men servants and on my maid servants. I will pour out my spirit in those days and I will show wonders in the earth and in the, in the heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon into blood before the coming of the great an awesome day of the Lord, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I, I want to pray with you as I as I get started, as the as the Lord gives me words. I want to share with you what He's putting in front of us, so that you can keep this in prayer. Um, I'm going to keep some of those names that I mentioned. Uh, I'm not going to actually mention. I'm going to keep private uh, because. Uh, well, because it's just wisdom to do that. But I, I want to share some things with you. Uh, Father, thank you that you are the anchor of our hope, the source of all of our need, the lover of our soul, our Savior, our King, our Lord, our God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for the salvation he provides. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Lord, watch over us. Keep us in your midst. Keep your arms around us. Keep us yielded to you. Deliver us into the victory that you've ordained and the restoration that you've promised. In Jesus' name, amen. So, anyway. I, I am... I've had a heart for people because of my mom. Uh, when, I was a, when I was a boy, uh, my grandparents were immigrants and uh, on my dad's side. And uh, I, I, I always had a heart for people. My grandmother, my grandfather took in homeless people. Uh, they had a farm here in the U.S. in Ohio. And uh, People during the Great Depression were riding the trains from city to city trying to find work. And uh, my grandmother would feed them, and my grandfather would give them a bed in the barn and uh, give them work to do. And I got a little bit older, and my mom uh, took me on a civil rights march. There was a great racial problem in the United States. Uh, I don't think so much anymore. I think we have a political correctness problem, but there was a great racial problem back in the 60s. And my mom took me on a civil rights march. Uh, we were probably one of the 
two, one of the only two white people who showed up. But uh, my mom, we, we were we saw great people. Uh, I don't remember Dr. King being there, but I was told that he was. Uh, I remember uh, Ralph Abernathy and uh, Jesse Jackson and some other great speakers and men of God and uh, leaders in the civil rights movement. And my mom took me and I, I got to hear some of the speeches, but I was a kid. I was in my early teens and, and uh, it was in Houston, Texas. Uh, and I was at I was at a place in my in my life where uh, I needed a lesson, and my mom brought it to me. So we went on this march, and then what I remember was some of the speaking. I remember marching. I remember singing "We Shall Overcome," and uh, I remember hanging out in the in the park. And on the way home, my mother asked me. She said, "What do you think about today?" And I I was you know it was okay. I got to be with my mom, and this was important to her. And, but it was kind of boring. I wanted to be playing with my friends, and she said, uh, "Well, what did you think of the uh, what did you think of the day?" And I said, "Well, you know, Mom, it was okay. Uh, what about the people?" I said, "You know, yeah, people." And she said, "Well, what about the kids?" I said, "They were kids, Mom. They were eating popsicles and drinking sodas and playing ball in the park and and hanging out." She said, "Okay." I found out a long time later that that was the whole point for her. She wanted me to see people as people. Uh, you know, once we get past that, once we stop putting labels on each other, once we stop looking at the color of our skin and 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 not just the natural the, the natural kinds of differences that we would see, but if we're if we're segregating ourselves according to opinions and ideas and uh, political correctness. I'll bring it up again because it's important. And we're we're failing to see each other in our basic humanity. God called each one of us. He wants to bless each one of us. He wants to restore to you not only what you lost that you can think of and look at, but your dreams, your goals, your visions. He wants to use you to do great things. So a few years ago, about 28 years ago. Uh, God called me to pastor a little church uh, in Friendswood, Texas. And it, it was a church going through some politics and some problems, and I was just kind of the, low, the guy who had the short stick. And so I went in and I did what I could, and before you know it, we were a homeless shelter. We were taking in homeless families, and we had several hundred come through um, over a course of about 10 years. And then we were shut down unceremoniously. And uh, I ended up, I had 10 kids at home uh, that, that needed to be cared for. Um, and so I did street ministry for a while, and, uh, and then I got a $50,000 a year job. And then the year after that, I was being paid close to a quarter of a million dollars to be chief operating officer of a specialty engineering company. And we did about $60 million in business in less than seven months at a 30% gross profit margin. But because one of my, I own 25% of the company, and because one of my partners had misrepresented uh, his history, he didn't mention that he had a, a felony on his record, and it wasn't some major egregious crime. It was just a, it was a poor decision on his part, uh, made as a young man, and and, and since he didn't bring it up when he was raising money, we lost all of our, um, I lost my salary, I lost my shares in the company. Uh, a year later or so, we, well, a couple years later, we lost our house, our cars, uh, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I ended up in, uh, my wife went to, to West Texas to take care of her mom in Odessa, Texas. And after watching things fall apart around me, not knowing what to do, I followed her. And I stayed as a guest in her mom's and her brother's apartment. Uh, and then we got our own place, and I was on a couple of praise and worship teams. and wasn't pastoring anymore. I worked a little bit with the homeless coalition there, and then we felt like the Lord it just all fell apart for us, and the Lord took us for some reason to a little town called San Angelo, Texas. So we were there, and I was on a praise and worship team, and 
I didn't get any clear direction about work. I just, he kept giving me projects to work on. In about 2014, one of those projects came to be a, a woman and her husband, and, who was a pastor, and uh, three children that were living in uh, a, a country where they were, they were undergoing incredible persecution. Their lives were at risk, and we helped them to get out. And, and, and then I had a heart for those people, for you, for those of you who had to leave because people who had an idea that was incompatible mm -hmm. with yours forced you to move, to leave, or lose your life, or pay a fine, or a tax, or go to prison, or whatever, just because their idea in their minds was superior to Christ, which, by the way, it's not. There is nothing superior, no one superior to our God. None. Should we respect all of these people who have different philosophies and ideas and should we love them? Yes. Jesus said that we were to even love our enemies. But that doesn't mean they're right just because they say so. Anyway. So then I began to meet relatives of that family and friends of that family and friends of theirs. and Now I have people like you, uh, and I, I'm not going to mention all of your names, I'm not going to mention any of your names, because you know who it is, you know that you text me, and you know that you comment on my YouTube videos, and you know uh, you know that I care, and I'm praying, and, and when I can, I do what I can. Uh, we're in such an amazing place. Let me tell you this story. Uh, about my ministry career has been centered on what Jesus would call the least of these. And uh, because that's, Jesus has said that we're, whatever we do to one of the least of these, his brothers, we do to him. So I want to be kind because Jesus was kind to me. I, I was lost. I went through a whole period of lostness in my life. I didn't really find a serious relationship with Jesus until I was in my early 30s. And then uh, I feel like God tricked me into being a Sunday school teacher and a pastor, but so what? I I did and I am and I'm glad. Uh, and so so now I'm a pastor of a little church in West Texas, and uh, and my business career has been in has been in finance uh, and, and in operations. That's my cat's tail, by the way. <laughs> and uh, he's he's uh, he's come to aggravate me. Uh, and since I'm talking to the computer, even if he's not getting the attention he's supposed to get. His name, he was named by my granddaughter, by the way. My granddaughter named him Mao, because that's what he says when he talks. Uh, so, uh, there he goes. He's speaking on cue. Uh, I, I have a heart for you, and in my business career, I've been in operations and technology and engineering. And four years ago, I ran into... Uh, because a friend of mine, uh, a brother in Christ, brought me uh, to a company that was going through a rough time. They invented a thermal battery. Basically what it means is it's a battery that stores heat, which can be used as heat, or it can be reconverted back into electricity. It can be converted into electricity. That's a better phrase. It can be converted into electricity and used in the building that it's in. Uh, large buildings, hospitals, malls, office buildings. But there are a lot of applications for it. Aluminum smelting plants, uh, or businesses like that. Uh, they're just a ton of applications. It's very unique, and God has given me favor with them, and God is, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a consultant and an advisor to the inventor uh, and the uh, chief executive officer. Amazing people. Absolutely amazing people. And they have engaged in a relationship with a company that is a public-private partnership whose focus is to move information technology, computer software, um, artificial intelligence, uh, programming, um, energy technologies into 17 states in the United States. Um, 
in colleges and universities, government buildings, hospitals, Fortune 1000 companies. Well, I have an opportunity to make a significant amount of money off of each one of those. Probably won't kick off until late August, early September, but once it does, then God is providing resources. Let me exchange, let me go back and explain this battery. There's a friend of mine who's watching this, and I, and I want to explain to you about this, this thermal energy storage system. All of us are familiar with elect, electrochemical batteries. We use them in our phones, our computers, uh, flashlights, and other devices. That's storing energy as electricity. What we're talking about is storing wasted heat energy, which, let's say, for instance, a solar, a utility scale solar installation. These thermal batteries will increase the electrical output of those, of those solar plants, those solar uh, power generation plants, by 10 to 25 percent, and when they're in peak production, by as much as 100 percent. That is huge. That would, that would be electricity they wouldn't have any other way, except by catching this heat, wasted heat energy, converting it into electricity, and bringing it back in. I will make a significant amount of money off of each one of those batteries that are sold. Well, not significant on individual, but collectively, very significant. Uh, we have identified, through this public-private partnership, almost $3 billion worth of business, creating over $300 million worth of fees and commissions. Now, that won't all be mine, obviously, but a percentage of it will. And that will help us to help you. And what I'm hoping in this is those of you who have communication skills or technical skills, uh, college education, a good communications capacity, will be able to help us. I'm, I'm hoping for some of you. Please don't uh, don't share this broadly, but uh, a limited number of people, four or five people, uh, we're looking at being able to do research work and uh, essentially market research work so that uh, we'll be able to move some of these products. I'm going to continue full-time in ministry. This is just something God has given me. And in this, that salary that I lost and all that money I lost at the set that the enemy of my soul stole from me and my family back in 2002, God is restoring right now in 2018. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the living God. God is doing this. And what He's doing for me, He's going to do for you. He's going to restore bigger, better than you had before. Because why? Because He wants to use your testimony. And, and I know sadly some of you, some of you, some of you will be deported back to your former home countries. And, and some of you will endure terrible things. Endure it for Christ. Endure it in the name of Christ because he's given you the grace to be able to do that. But I'm believing many, many, many more of you are going to be restored. You're going to have a, 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 a welcoming new home country, a job, a home, a future. Jeremiah 29:11 says that God has good plans for you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Plans to prosper you. Why? So that you'll reach out to those who are lost. Maybe even your former persecutors. Reach out to them so that they can know the same Jesus that you know. So that they'll be born again. It's the kindness of God that draws people to repentance. Be kind. Be kind to one another. I'm, I'm going to ask that you pray for us. We're very close. We need an investor to come in to put a little bit of money in so that we can go out and do what we need to do. It's going to take about anywhere from $2 million to $5 million. And we, we believe we've identified four or five possibilities, maybe even many more. What I'm hoping to see here, and what I'm, and what I'm hoping that you'll, what I'm believing for, and what I'm believing that, I, that you'll pray with me for, is that we'll have investors lined up wanting to put money in 
so that we can kick this off, so that we can begin to generate the money to get the resources to you to help you take the steps you need to take. And this is being sovereignly done by God to take the steps that you need to take to become legal and to move into the new welcoming home country that God has in store for you. I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'm believing for the best. Let me close this in prayer. Father, watch after my brothers and sisters who are viewing this. Take us to a higher place. Take us to trusting you, to loving you with all of our heart, soul, and mind and strength, to, to trusting you with all of our being, knowing that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine. Deliver my brothers and sisters, just like you delivered Joseph from the well that his brothers put him in. You delivered him from Potiphar's house. You delivered him from the prison, and you put him in the second chariot behind Pharaoh leading all of Egypt during a critical time in history. Father, I'm asking right now that you bless my brothers and sisters in a similar fashion. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.